welcome everyone. I'm Julia from Levita Healing. I am an energy healer and a certified emotion code, body code practitioner. And I am here today with Brittany Kelly. Brittany, do you want to introduce yourself? Hi, everybody. My name is Brittany. I am a labor doula in the Metro Detroit area. I also offer placenta encapsulation and childbirth education. And I'm here with Julia today to just talk about some things that are going on. And yeah. we're just going to chat and see what happens. <laughs> about some things that have come up um, during our work and with some clients that we've experienced. Um, we mainly want to bring up um, topics about religion and spirituality and healing and so because we've come into different situations and we do not want to force our opinions on anybody we are just having a broad open discussion um, and just wanting to get different people's points of views different opinions and just talk about this with no judgment no point of view and yeah beautifully said yes so, um, Brittany, what brought up this interest in this topic for you about this conflict between like healing in religion and, um, yeah, where do you want to start? Absolutely. So I guess, and I wasn't raised religious. So I guess I would start out by saying that I was never raised with any, um, certain religion. We were kind of raised in a way where, um, we took our own journey and that was something that we just were kind of to figure out for ourselves. Um, so I guess it was interesting or it's interesting to me, I guess the way that I see the body, um, I believe that we are made up of energy. I believe that we are energetic beings. I believe that we have different energy centers in our body that um, can become blocked and create illness within us. Um, and so I guess it was just kind of interesting to me to realize that because of certain religions, um, I guess thinking that way goes against certain religions, I guess. And I, th this is very new to me and it wasn't something that I ever realized because to me it's more, I guess I would say like scientific. Mm -hmm. um, so it has been scientifically proven that we are energetic beings. So I guess it was just kind of hard for me to wrap my brain around. Mm -hmm. um, so that I just think that would be like a great chat for us to have because I do have so many questions and I know that you, um, you are, you're religious, aren't you, Julia? Yeah. So I like that. Um, I kind of like the contrast between our backgrounds. I grew up, um, strict Catholic and growing okay. up in the church and I know a lot of the Bible, I would say. And so I like the two different backgrounds that we are bringing together. Um, Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, so I will give a little bit about my background. Um, so I did grow up in the church, in the uh, Catholic church. And, but I um, had a strong intuition from a young girl that I was meant to heal with my hands and that I was meant to be like a healer. I was, um, even my mom would say when I was a baby, I would always like rub people's back. Like I just had, I just had that energy. And so growing up, I, um, started to research about what is this healing with your hands? What is, and I got into energy healing and, um, I started to do Reiki and, um, and then I went through a really, really hard period in my life and where I tried talk therapy, I tried all these different things and nothing worked until I went to an energy healer until I went to somebody who was certified in, um, emotion called body code. And that is what completely healed me. And I ran into the same thing where I was, I was like, Oh my God, like, look at, I'm healed. I look at me and people, I would, people would start to say, no, that's evil. And I ran into the same thing. Like, wait, I don't understand. This can't be, I don't understand. Um, so we, I just want to discuss that because there is a lot of people who are afraid of energy of frequency of just stuff that is like not in the bible stuff that we are not taught and that caused me to go down a journey to figure out why like go back in history and figure out what what is all this fear about and so i've done a lot of research about it and i know you have too right absolutely it's just so interesting to me because when i do um go down the rabbit hole and start to research it it always brings me back to um, like back in the day, like hundreds and hundreds of years ago, it seems that they 
did realize these things yes. that they did accept that we are energetic beings and they were much more in tune with that in that way of healing. Yeah. And then as you, if you look like further down the road, once the organized religions really started um, forming that, that was really taken away and, and separated out. And I just think that that's so interesting. Um, yes. You know, I just, it's wild to me. <laughs> yes. What, um, so what kind of research have you, what, some things that have stuck out, like that you've found just like in videos? Some things that have stuck out. So I, the word spirit, I feel like has this, um, Weird this stigma around it. Um, it, I feel I have noticed that it's kind of a trigger, um, to a lot of people who follow like an organized religion. Um, I mean, I would go back. So I found this really interesting and it was something that I was, um, researching more recently with like the work of Rudolf Steiner and his work with child development. Um, I think, and I'm probably going to go off on a couple tangents here while I say this. Um, <laughs> so, the way that our school system is set up right now, I think is really designed to take the spirituality away from children, take that out of children. I mean, if you look at a child uh, and just in their pure form, they are so authentic. They, everything they do, is just so raw. They are just loving, forgiving beings. Um, and I think that the way that everything is structured right now, we are forcing them to see things a different way. When I think that when they enter the world, they are more spiritual and they are able to pick up on these things and they are very open to yeah. spirituality yeah. and everything. Yes, they have um, and, programs yeah, installed. Exactly. They aren't, they have no programs, no programming. Everything they know is, is what they're learning in the moment, right? Um, so I think they lose like a sense of control children, children start to feel, especially now, um, the school day is getting longer. Um, the recess and the break time is getting a lot shorter. Um, and a lot of schools are, are trying to change it to, instead of like recess where the kids will have free time, um, they will do like a structured, like, uh, a activity. So they will go to the gym and an adult will teach them yoga. They'll go to the gym and an adult will teach them basketball or this or that. So in a child's mind, they have no control anymore. They don't have any control over their life. They're kind of just forfeiting and giving up and saying, all right, every single thing I do is going to be dictated by an adult. I really don't have any choice in anything that I do. Whereas I think back in the day, back hundreds of years ago, the hunters, the gatherers, all of, you know, these cultures, they were very hands off with their children. Um, the children learned on their own and they learned from other kids and they lived like with the earth. They lived with the changing of the seasons and all of the things and we, I just went off on a whole tangent, but I, no, I think that we are spiritual beings. And I think that right off the bat, when we're born, we are sensitive to these energies and we realize that they are there and then it is stripped away from us. Yes, I want to bring up something, um, with my research that I've done, I have, um, discovered that we have like an internal self guidance system when we're born, like the children and we know what we desire like we know what time our body what time we need to wake up what we want to eat what we like what we feel our body needs to do do we need to like rest or do we want to go outside and play and so we have um that internal guidance to tell us like what we desire and so even like like you said from the time we are born we are taught to overrun that guidance system so like when a baby's crying, the baby's trying to communicate something like, does it want to go outside? Does it want to eat? Does it need sleep? You know, whatever it needs. Maybe it wants to be hugged or kissed, but instead people are just shoving a binky in its mouth and the baby settles for that instead of what it, it really desired. So even from that young of age, we're taught to just override our internal spirit, which is guiding us. So that is, and then with the school system, exactly like, getting up at a, the same time every single day, going to a certain class, like we are taught to 
that we have to be told what was good for us and what our body wants and what activities we need to do instead of just having that freedom to play with our own like guidance system. So then we grow up as adults and we're just lost. Everybody's like a lost compass. We, we don't even, we don't have, we don't have that ability to tune into like that intuition. Like, what do I want to do with my life or what is my body? You know, like, that's why I feel like pe people are getting sick today because you, they don't have that ability to like go in and have that intuition to say what's going on with my body or you know what I mean? So yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So that's, um, a huge thing is that internal guidance system is your spirit. It does, you can't, it's not a physical thing. Like we, well, we all know what we're talking about, right? But it's not a tangible thing. So that's your spirit basically. Absolutely. And I think we had talked about this before, but just, um, intuition, I think because of the way that we are brought up, um, nowadays with the school system and the pressures of like after school curriculars and this and that, like you're always going from one thing to the next, to the next. Um, we don't live by our intuition anymore. We don't listen to it. We aren't in tune with it. We just kind of shut it off. Yeah. Um, and I think even if you do feel it sometimes you, yeah. And it's, it's so crazy to me and it's hard because I realize these things and I want to get back to these things, but just the way that society is and we're so go, go, go all the time. It's hard to just sit with yourself sometimes and, and really come go within, you know, mm -hmm. it's just so wild to me. And I think that, um, with the schooling and everything like that, we take away, like, I truly believe everyone is here for a purpose. And I think that the point of us being here you know, is to figure out what is all of this? Why are we here? And what is my purpose in all of it? And I think that everyone's path is so different in that. Um, and that it's basically impossible nowadays to find what your purpose is with the way that all of this is structured. I mean, you don't get to choose, you know, like maybe one kid is very, very interested in math, in science, and all of those things and wants to pursue that, but they're being forced into learning, right. you know, English this and all, all of these other things that they're not good at. So they're sitting here thinking, wow, I'm really not good at this. I'm not excelling in this. Instead of really just working towards their strengths. Right. I think that it's so important that we figure out what our strengths are and then work primarily on those and figure out Exactly, from a young age. What we're meant to do with them. When that's just, that's not how it is. Everyone takes the same exact classes. Everyone does this, this, and this at the same time every day. How are we supposed to be individual beings like in that system? So I guess that we're, what we're just offering right now is just saying that there is something more than what we've experienced since we were young and just what the world is going on. We we know what ego is with the flesh, what all this society is, but there's this other part of us, our spirit, our intuition, okay? And so that's just what we're trying to just offer to people is that the acknowledgement that there's there's something else here. And um, yeah, um, did you, what else have you found about, what was his name, Rudolph Stein? Rudolf Steiner. So I just started honestly digging into that. And a lot of his work is in German. Oh, okay. um, so it's kind of hard. I mean, it, it, there is translations, but it's almost kind of hard to understand the translation from German with the things he was saying. It's very confusing. Um, but besides just that, I've been reading. So I homeschool and I know I'm making this like a lot about school, but it's just like kind of blowing my mind that like all of these things start so young, us becoming disconnected from these things. Yeah. And um, like, it's like, we need to start asking like, why? Why is the school system the way it is? Why is society the way it is? Like, exactly. Broadening the idea, maybe there's something more or there's a reason why. And so, yeah. I absolutely. So yeah, I homeschool. Um, I have three kids now and we homeschool and it's such a struggle for me that I'm finding. Um, you see a lot of homeschool parents say that you need to de-school yourself before you start to homeschool your kids. And I'm like, what does that mean? Uh, and I'm finally starting to figure it out. So I'm realizing kids don't learn very well under like a lot of 
pressure. Like I can tell when my child is like, I'm over this. I am not taking this in anymore. Um, my brain is like over here and you're trying to get me to focus on this. And then they just get upset and there's tears and I'm frustrated and they're frustrated and it's not good for anyone. And I think that it causes trauma. I really do think that it is causing trauma in, in the children when, when you school that way. Um, so I'm understanding now the de-schooling, like in my mind, there's a certain way that you learn your letters and numbers and you need to know your letters and numbers by a certain time or else you're falling behind. Um, de-schooling essentially is taking that out of your brain. That's not real. <laughs> that is a made up structure. Ooh, who um, up? Exactly. Like who decides? Like. <laughs> And then telling kids that their whole life, you know, like in kindergarten, when the teacher would tell, you know, the parents, oh, your child is behind. And then the parents are frustrated and then they go home after, after school and they're drilling their kids on this and that the whole time. And it's just creating trauma for the kid. Like, I just, I just think that it's so wild. And I think that it just starts so young. Like we're breaking their spirit. Like children are, they have such a huge sense of wonder. And then right from the bat, we're just we're just kind of stripping that away and it doesn't give them much room either to wonder or to question yeah. many things. Um, and so I just wanted to um, bring about like why somebody, like you said, it is breaking their spirit. It's breaking their creativity. It's breaking their intuition, their internal guidance system. So like, why would somebody want to do that? Why would society, why was it, is it designed this way? And um, I can talk about some of the stuff I've found, if you've found anything too. Yes, um, absolutely. So I basically, I've found that um, back in the time of that, like Jesus was alive, so like 2000 years ago or however, um, the ch people were very oppressed and um, the, the church wanted to control how everybody believed what they did and basically how the government is now and the purpose was because they benefited they benefited land and property and you get these people get benefit by controlling you right so when Absolutely. Jesus came along he was um and like I know some of the things I'm going to say is not in the bible or some people aren't going to agree with it um, I'm just speaking what I found and maybe what, just like what I believe. It's just another point of view. Um, so when Jesus came along, he was a rebel. He, um, he was an enlightened being. He traveled to India. He traveled to all these different places where they taught him meditation. They taught him yoga. They taught him about your intuition, like this higher realm that you can connect with. Okay. And so most people didn't get to travel like that, like back in those days. Um, because you stayed in like a small town, you didn't really leave your town. Okay. So the only way to, he was very um, interested in behavior and why we, we did certain things. And the only way to learn about that was to travel far, far away. Like they didn't have Google or books and stuff. So he came back to his town and, um, he became, he had like a spiritual awakening and he was in constant communication with the higher realms, higher beings. And he was able to increase his frequency and his vibration and all this stuff. And that's why he was able to create miracles for people. And we all have that ability. Um, I also, I'm reading this book about Jesus and he constantly is, um, it's actually a woman who channeled Jesus. And okay. I know that um, some people may not believe all that, but it's, right. it hits a very, everything just hits very, very true for me. And you can just, yeah. you know, it just feels true. Um, so he, he's saying that I am no different than you. I am a, I was a human just like you. Um, the, the, the church wanted to make him look like he was this divine being so to make it look like he was unattainable, that that enlightenment was, you could never reach that. Like you, making you different, like you're a human, you're a sinner, and he's this divine being when that was not the truth. He was just like us. Um, and he wanted us to know that. Yes. And it, so it gets, 
the, he the Bible, original Bible that was written in Hebrew gets translated to French, gets translated into, by the time it got translated into English, it was like, I don't know, five, seven different languages later. Right. When someone says in Hebrew that I'm the son of God, there is son is like, means extension. So he was trying to say okay. extension of God, just like we all are extensions of God. And especially in the Arabic language, they don't, there's not like exact translation into English. They more like have to describe something. So um, I just feel like we have to take that into account that the Arabic language is just very different than English. The church instilled a lot of fear about connecting to the higher realms because if you connect to the higher realms and go within, you're connecting to your intuition and your self-guidance system, which they don't want you to connect to. They want to manip they want to control you, right? So if you go within, you cannot be controlled. So that is why they they instilled a lot of fear about possession, about evil, that if you meditate, if you connect to higher beings, you could connect to a devil, you can connect to all these lower beings. And so there's been over, over 2000 years, murders in front of you, there's a lot of, um, you would be killed, you would be ostracized, you would be basically like stoned to death if you even entertain those ideas okay so a lot of fear that people are having like I have so much empathy for people who are who are afraid of this because it's instilled in our in our ancestors brains it's instilled in the collective mm -hmm. consciousness like it's just I have so much compassion and I and I just want to um you know help people release that fear because Jesus also taught, if you feel fear over something, it is not truth. When you have peace for something, that is truth. So anything other than peace, it means it's not true. So if you are having fear over your religion, over spirituality, know that these yet that's your internal guidance system trying to tell you something's false. That's how your, your emotions are guiding you. When you're scared, it's saying this is wrong. When you have peace, it's saying this is truth. Okay. So I think that's I a love that. thing that people can take away. Just one thing is just to acknowledge when you are feeling scared and nervous over something and when you are feeling peace. Yes. So. Do you think that, and then this is something that I, cause I do believe that there are bad beings as well. And I believe that, um, a lot of people who are very open to energy and open to spirit can also be open to these um, like evil, we'll just say evil for this, like evil beings who will basically pretend to be light. So like a false light. Mm -hmm. um, and then if you are very open and you're not able to discern um, the, the false light from the, from the truth on um, that, you could be guided by, I guess, essentially demons. Yeah. What would you have to say about that? Yes, absolutely. Just as there are higher beings, a lot of people agree. You can pray through Jesus Christ, right? There, there is people pray to Jesus. People pray through saints. There, there are higher beings, but just as there are higher, there are lower vibrational lower. beings that, and it all depends on your vibration. If you are, if you are depressed, if you are sad, if you are having a lot of self-hatred. If you try to connect with beings, you're, you will probably meet somebody that's going to match your vibration, right? And you do not want yes. to um, connect with people of a lower vibe, you know, entities of a lower vibration. But just because that exists doesn't mean that there's higher beings that won't help you. If you pray and you're coming to a place of, um, wanting to better yourself, a higher being will meet you and will, will help you. And you can also communicate with higher beings. And um, that's where discernment comes in. Again, like yeah. the, these, these lower vibrational beings can come as false light, but it's so obvious. Like it's so obvious when you have connected with the higher realms. I feel like people who have not connected with higher energy, 
that's those are people who get deceived because they just don't know any better it's and that's what i'm wondering too is um could you like i think that people can be open to the idea of all of this and everything that we're talking about um but not be in a place energetically where they are able to connect with higher beings where they are only connecting with lower vibrational beings and thinking that they are connecting because they have with and that's they because don't they don't know so i in that way i could see how it could come off as very dangerous to opening yourself up to these spirits I guess it, it, we could say. And I can see that from a religious standpoint. Um, I know that they are very against like Reiki, in some cases yoga. Um, and I think, yeah, if if you aren't able to discern, um, then it is possible that you could be in connection with a lower vibrational being. Another thing, um, we were just talking about this at the dinner table the other night with our daughter. She was asking like, well, how can you tell the difference then between like a lower vibrational and a higher vibrational being. And then one thing we had told her is that a lower vibrational being um, would be telling you something, telling you to do something or telling you something is true. Whereas a higher vibrational being, if you're in connection with them, they don't tell you what is real. They don't tell you what is false. They just try to guide you in the direction to figure it out for yourself. Mm -hmm. Would you think, would you find that to be true as well? their voice is very quiet they are not they don't want to scare you higher vibrational beings and you have to meet them halfway they are very in dimensions very higher than us and so you have to raise your vibration to meet them halfway and they will never it's not like that voice in your head that's like do this do this or go that way do it they're they're very just it's 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 very calm and peaceful and just kind of like a, a gentle nudge. It's not yes. to be a, you need to do this or you are. Or telling you who you are or telling you what your role is here on earth. Like they would never tell you anything about yourself. They will just gently nudge you in a direction to figure that out on your own. Because that is the only way that we are able to higher our own vibration. And you can even see that energy embodied in humans. If a human is trying to push upon you an idea or tell you to do something, you can, you can just observe. They are operating at a lower vibration. A, a higher vibrational being will never say you should or you, um, you know, they're just, they're just yes. will offer ideas, you know. So everybody, I feel like higher vibration understands sovereignty, that each person is their own sovereign being, and they understand free will. And um, where, I, I just, I don't want somebody to misinterpret this information, because I know that I used to watch videos like this, and I used to get scared, like, oh my god, am I being, am I communicating with, like, and I don't even feel like I communicate. It's more of just like a communion, like a spirit. Like I'm just, I feel it's, I don't hear anything audible. I just feel. And that's another yeah. thing. You don't, you want to be careful if you hear something audible because higher spirits will not communicate with you audible unless you are very advanced. They will start off. They do not want to scare you. They will start off by showing you angel numbers, like one, 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 two, two, two. They'll start to. So the signs that you look for, yeah. even. The even in dreams dreams the coincidences yes. never really coincidences or synchronicities or they'll communicate through you through movies or tv or something just like clicks they will never like for to communicate audibly you will be very advanced okay and like really know this stuff okay so if absolutely if any if you are getting anything like that it's it's probably not because I've been seeing angel numbers and synchronicities for, or syn synchronicities, I'm sorry, for years. <laughs> I'm still, and I'm just becoming, I'm still deprogramming all that old stuff, that, all that fear out of my mind. And I'm not even there yet. So, um, absolutely. Yeah. And do you think that, I guess where it gets confusing for me uh -huh. is, can you, I mean, you said that um, you were raised Catholic. Are you still a practicing Catholic? Do you still go to church? And Yeah, so I like to just respect the church because I do feel, I like to take the, the good things out of it. I love that it's, I get to be with my family. It's community. I yes. 
take what somebody says without judgment now. I'm able to just take what the priest says and if and I just can hold my own my own belief system. Like I, I take what you say without judgment. That's awesome if that's what you believe. But I, I may take it, I may not, and that's okay. And I'm not trying to shove it down somebody else's throat. And that's what I don't want to shove anything yeah. down anybody's throat. I like to just be non-judgmental and if I love to hear what other people believe too. So absolutely. So I guess like where I get confused and what I'm trying to understand is because, because, okay. So like you just said, you are religious, you go to church and you are also very open to all of the things that we have just spoken about. Um, so it is possible to be religious and also be spiritual at the same time. And for me, I feel like that can go hand in hand, but I'm, I'm, what I'm learning is that a lot of these religions are saying no, yeah, are saying no to it and they shut it down right away. That's evil. That's bad. You know? Um, so I guess that's where I just, I kind of struggle with it for, because for me, I mean, my spirituality, it doesn't really have much to do with religion. I feel like being spiritual and religious the paths, they kind of just go together. Like even if you were studying the Bible and reading the Bible and you're thinking of it from a more spiritual standpoint, you can see the truth in the stories and you can see, um, they, they'll just resonate with you maybe a little bit differently. Um, I don't know if that makes sense. It's really hard for me to put my thoughts into words about this topic sometimes. Yeah, no, I think that we are multifaceted beings. Like you can be religious, yes. you can be spiritual. You, this, we are very, we are taught to be put in a box that you have to be put with this label. And that's, you know, and that's when you, when you challenge somebody else who wants to be put in a box. So, and wants to be labeled, you are, you're challenging their beliefs. So you can see when people are like, no, that's evil. You're challenging their ego. So it's yeah. a good, it's a, a good thing because it's showing them where they are limited. And, you know, I, I think that we can be many different things. We can, I, lo I love saying that I'm Catholic. I love saying that I'm spiritual and I'm an energy healer. Like I love just saying all these things that doesn't make sense to other people yes. <laughs> and it's okay it's okay if you're scared but i just don't like when other people are pushing their views on me and then you know me too yeah i, I totally people. understand we have a mutual respect for everybody like like i can go to church and see the priests and see all these people and their beliefs and i respect you i don't i don't try to yeah come at you with my beliefs. I just respect where you're at. So I think that's just so amazing for me to see that you are able to have your religion and your spirituality go hand in hand in that way. Um, I, I love to see it. I love to see it. <laughs> it makes me excited. Is that weird? I think the new generations are going to be more open and a I'm more open to this information. I feel like the old generations, I just, they really have a lot of fear programs installed. And and I see it with so many different things in, in our parents. And I think like our parents were raised, um, like our grandparents, I think we're very strict on our parents and very hard on them. Um, like you can see it they're very intense about certain things, I guess. Like I was talking about the de-schooling. I think sometimes um, like our family will have trouble with the fact that we're homeschooling because they essentially think that we're supposed to be doing public school at home and that we need to be monitoring our children every step of the way, making sure that they're hitting this, this, and this mark and that they're progressing. They're not falling behind and whatnot. Um, I think that I don't know. They, I think that there's just a lot of programming that those generations had um, that they weren't really given the chance to question. Whereas now I think we have a little more freedom um, to kind of question and open up to these things, if that makes any sense. Yes. I, it was just such a different time, you know, um, when they were being raised. Conversation, I feel like back then. So we're just blessed that exactly. we talk about this. And there's more information out there, you know, um, if people were interested in more of like the spirituality and this and that, there's like so many videos you can go and watch so many different, um, books you can read 
and try to figure it out for yourself. And I think that that's another reason why more and more people are going to start opening up to it. Cause like you said, back then they didn't, they didn't have access to any of this. And I feel like if people were openly speaking like this, you know, 40 years ago, 50 years ago, I don't think it would go over very well. Yeah. I think the, um, the first step, if you are interested is to go within is to start connecting with yourself, connecting with your feelings. Like even the first step could be like, even just catching yourself in the moment when you, when you feel yourself angry, sad, whatever, start exploring that. Like the way you raise your vibration is by clearing out all of your trauma in the spirit spirituality world. It's called shadow work. Your shadow work is the traumas that you're holding, the inherited patterns, the inherited trauma you have, all of your birth trauma, all of the stuff you've Mm -hmm. gone on through school. Like it's important to clear all that because that makes you really heavy. And so doing your own um, like healing journey, like there, every single person needs to be on a healing journey. Like that is not for yeah. people that have just been through like really traumatic things. It's for every person and it's for your whole life. It never stops. You never stop growing and evolving. And I think like a lot of people think like, oh, I don't need healing. I've never been through something traumatic. Yes. Like, uh, you know, I feel like people think like, oh, if you've been through a car accident or, or crazy death or like big traumas. Yes. But in this, I guess I could relate it to this. This is one little thing. Cause I, when I first heard of shadow work and all these things, I was thinking the same thing. I'm like, I've never had any like big traumatic things happen to me in my life. Like, what do you mean? I have to work through all of this stuff. Well, I would say too, first of all, is like journaling is amazing for this. Like the things that will start, it's like your hand is moving and you don't even know what's happening. And then you go back and you read it and you're like, oh my gosh, I never put this together before. It's honestly amazing. Um, So I guess this is just one little example that I would give. Um, When I was younger, and I always remember this, when I was younger, um, we were outside on my front lawn and we were playing football with some of the neighborhood kids and my dad was playing with us. And my dad had said something like, all right, like we got to wrap it up. We have to go in for lunch. And I mentioned to one of my neighbors, I said, Hey, do you want to come eat lunch over my house? And my dad got very upset with me. He got very upset that I had invited someone over to eat lunch. And he like stormed off. And I just remember him like, I was like blown away by it. Like, what did I just do wrong? Like I was embarrassed. Um, And that always stuck with me. Cause he got pretty upset. Like it always stuck with me. And I wondered what did I do wrong? Like, I'm just trying to offer, you know, my home and my food to somebody else, which you think would be a good thing. Well, it wasn't until I really started doing shadow work that that kept coming up for me. It kept coming up for me and the way that that situation made me felt feel. And then once I started working through it, I kind of realized that like, so when my dad was growing up, um, they were, they were very poor. They didn't have a lot of money. So he is still, was still in that mindset of that like scarcity mindset. Like, no, you can't invite anyone over to eat our food because food is very expensive and we can't just be, you know, sharing this with everybody. Like we have to ration these things, you know, like that kind of mindset. And then once I kind of unlocked that and I realized why he acted the way that he did in that moment, I was able to forgive him. And then that like went away and I didn't feel um, those emotions anymore. I think that we suppress things and then like randomly we'll just start feeling these weird emotions and like, it'll like, we can almost start feeling the way that we did in those situations. And I'm like, why am I feeling like this right now? Like this happened 15 years ago. Why am I still feeling this? And it's like, you didn't process it. You didn't deal with it. Like that is an example of the trauma that you can be having. And that was the like, Slightest in the scheme of things is a very small trauma to have. Like my dad didn't want my friend over for lunch, but for me <laughs> in the moment, like it made me feel all the feels and I had to deal with it and I had to forgive him. And I think a lot of times um, people will also not want to do the shadow work because that will be, they say you have to forgive people. Um, and it's uncomfortable to like physically go up to somebody and say, Hey, I forgive you for this. And they're like, what? I used to think it was like that. Like you had to physically go up to somebody and apologize. And I'm thinking, I'm not doing that for all this weird stuff I'm holding on to from 15 years ago. It's not like that. It's, 
more like in your mind, you're like, okay, I no longer hold this against this person. I don't hold this resentment anymore. And you, it, that's just lifted. You forgive them. And it, that's that. So I thought that was just, that was like my first real, like when I first started shadow work, the first thing that came up for me and I was like, oh my gosh, I understand now. So I totally awesome. get it. Awesome. And obviously as a doula, you know, the first traumatic thing we're going through is birth. Birth is the most traumatic yeah. thing. And from our bodies, physically, mentally, emotionally, just like if you're connected to how connected you are to the mother. And so yeah. if we are, you are birds into this world, you have shadow work to do. <laughs> yeah. And what Julia is saying, like, she's not talking about like the mother having trauma from birth, which it does happen as well, but actually the baby like you when you were coming into the world through the pelvis out of the birth canal like that is hard work for a baby too yeah it's hard work for the mom but that is a whole journey within itself just for that baby and the trauma starts right there it is a traumatic experience yeah. so yeah it's insane how early it starts like we were talking with school and everything but these little things do they start happening way sooner than that i mean really it starts with I feel like it starts with birth and I mean that's a whole other topic and we can make more videos on this I do want to make a video on because um I feel like it obviously like the how we're birthed in the hospital setting like all those steps and why how it's all set up is is like again I feel like meant to disconnect us from our, our self-guidance system yes. meant to disconnect us from our spirit and um like, I think like the way that they set up the society and it's by design is that for every little thing, we think that we need to put ourselves into someone else's hands. We need to be yeah. taken care of by someone else. Like we can't handle this on our own. Like we can't birth our babies on our own. We need um, a whole medical team to do that for us. You know what I mean? We need all these interventions and this medicine and it's this big traumatic thing. And it's like, and that's just another thing that they've taken away from us. And it's like, not, they, people don't even question, like, why would I even question what they're, like, yes, that's what I'm supposed to do, what the, what the doctor's telling me, like, that's right. That's how over exactly. generations, we've just become so disconnected, not even to question. And so we're just reintroducing, like you do, you're just reintroducing what we've known for thousands of years. Yes, exactly. And that's like how I said at the beginning of the video, how I feel like talking about our body or us being energetic beings. Like we already knew that I thought. So I, I guess that's just like, <laughs> like to me, at least like that, that's a fact. Like we know that to be true. So when somebody tries to tell me that that's going against a certain religion by me feeling that way, by, you know, I, I just don't understand why it can't go hand in hand. Like that scientific view, we are energetic beings and a religion. I don't see how they have to oppose each other. I, I think that they should definitely be able to coexist. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think that they need to in order for us to grow. I think it's in, very important to realize that. Yeah. And if somebody is at that point where you, you don't believe that they can coexist, we respect you and your, where you are yes. at. That's where, you, that's where you're at in your, in your journey. And that's awesome. Absolutely. Trying to reconnect us to our, our roots. So yes. Any last things that you want to add? We're definitely going to do more videos on different topics, but just anything to wrap up this video? I don't know if I have anything specific. I mean, I do think it's interesting. Like when we think of our bodies as energy centers, like the emotion code, the book that you let me borrow, um, it was kind of blowing my mind to think that our organs are actually what are causing our emotions. Yeah. Um, because you usually think of it as like your brain, I guess it would be causing all of your emotions. But when you think of it that way, um, I think that it just, I think that it makes a lot more sense. And that if we're able to like, oh, I'm feeling really angry. Oh, I need to like heal or, you know, detox to this specific organ maybe to like care or heal that organ to help with that. I think that that I think that that's just mind blowing and so interesting. And I wanted to get your thoughts on that a little bit. Yeah. I feel like that information needs to be taught at younger ages. Like I love that you're, you're teaching your daughter about all the things you just said, like, or um, like about spirit and like, these are things that children understand. Like we need to start talking about our energy centers and yes. emotions and how to process this stuff at young age. Like 
this stuff is honestly like kindergarten it it feels like and like that when my daughter talks she, sometimes my daughter will start talking and i'm like oh my gosh that was so deep what you just said it's like insane that you just like she'll tell a whole story and i'm like everything you just said is so true and most people today don't even understand what you just said like they're very in tune with it because you probably yes, why? give her that you give her that opportunity that space you're not crushing her so like wow That's she's amazing. in she's very me and my husband talk about it all the time she's very in tune with energies and spirit and you can you can see it plain as day it's in a good way like it's amazing to see <laughs> i love hearing that yeah. it makes me so happy. so yeah maybe next time we can talk a little bit more about like the emotion code and how all of that works because i think a lot of people will be very interested in how like your organs are causing your emotions yeah. and i think we live in a day and age where people are just very um they have a hard time dealing with their emotions and they just go around all day kind of spewing this emotion here this emotion there um and aren't really able to like sit with it and i think it's just i just think it's so interesting that that could be coming from your organs and not just like your mental <laughs> yeah. self so we should I have, definitely i have a video on what is the emotion code and so you guys can go and watch that but we will definitely make a, another video talking more about this stuff and if um, anybody enjoys this video and you have any questions you want us to answer, maybe another video, please comment below or please DM one of us. Um, and it, I, we hope that we did not offend anybody. We hope that this was just a very yes. safe space to just talk about different topics. And um, I, I hope that nothing I said was like trying to shove down my belief to anybody I just I welcome I literally accept and welcome everybody and all of your beliefs absolutely yes thank you Brittany. yes we respect everyone we're not trying to offend anybody ever we're just basically having open dialogue getting our thoughts out there and then hopefully maybe this video could help somebody um kind of realize some of these things for themselves if you're on your own sort of spiritual journey or battling um yeah. between like your religion and your spirituality and trying to figure out how they can come together or if they can at all. Um, we'll definitely be making some more videos. Yes. Awesome. Thank you, Brittany, for being here. And thank you everybody for watching. Thank you. See you next time. Awesome. Thanks, Julia.